Allah has given every one of us a degree of power. He's given us control over our bodies. He's given us control over our limbs, our eyes, our tongues. That's the kind of mulk that He gave us over this, this territory. This body is actually not something I own, but it's something Allah gave me authority over. You know, and the fact that I'm able to use my tongue at the moment, or my mind can think something, and communicate that down to the way that my tongue can reach it, and the fact that you can hear these sounds, and process them, and make sense of them, is all something, a power that Allah gave us, a mulk that Allah actually gave us. And this is something that we don't actually own. Similarly, a little bit further beyond our own bodies, Allah has given us some level of authority, or influence, or control uh, in our lives. You've got some level of authority over the things that you own. The fact that you turn your steering wheel right and the car turns right is a qudra in a, in a mulk that Allah gave you over your car. You know, because if Allah wants, the steering fluid can go and the car is going straight no matter how much you turn. Like it used to happen when I lived in New York and it was snowy days. You could turn all you want. It's still going straight, you know. So that's something that Allah grants. It's not something that we own or possess. And beyond that is of course control and authority that we exert over people. As a parent, I have some degree of control over my children. I like to think I have a lot more control, but I really don't. It's a degree of control that I have exercise over my children. A spouse can exert influence or control over another spouse. Uh, you know, teachers can exert control over or influence over students. So in our personal lives, in society, whether it's in our family or at work, maybe you're the manager, you have some control over the, the, your team, the people that are working under your team. Maybe you're the employer, you're the owner of the business, you have control over your employees. So Allah has given us different degrees of mulk different degrees of control and authority and power in our life. So when we hear these ayat, this is something that you and I need to hear, because every one of us in fact has been endowed with, has been given some degree of power and influence. If not at least, the very least on our own selves, but beyond ourselves also. Allah Azza wa Jal told us, commanded us to declare this. He said, قُلِ اللَّهُمَّ مَالِكَ الْمُلْكِ تُؤْتِ الْمُلْكَ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتَنْزِعُ الْمُلْكَ مِمَّنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُعِزُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُذِلُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ بِيَدِكَ الْخَيْرِ إِنَّكَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ It's a very famous ayah of Surah Al-Imran. And it begins with Allah commanding us to declare this. قُلْ Allahumma, Say, O oh Allah. Say this to Allah. In other words, this is something that needs to be rehearsed. By the way, this is not just a dua. In a dua, there's a talab. There's some kind of a request. Usually when you find a dua in the Qur'an, you find رَبَّنَا رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِقْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا In the same surah. But here, we find something else. You find you and me telling something to Allah, declaring something to Allah. As if we are testifying to Allah that the fact that we believe in Him leads us to this additional testimony. It's actually an extension in a sense of our understanding of the shahada of La ilaha illallah. What does that mean for us practically? So we say, Oh Allah, Malik al-Mulk, the owner of all kingdom the owner of all dominion, of sovereignty, of power. And here this phrase, even though this entire khutbah could be about that phrase, I want to just make you think about one piece of this remarkable phrase, Malik al-Mulk. Malik is someone who owns something. So I can be Malik of a, of a pen. I could be Malik of this TV over here. I could be Malik of objects. I own things. Back in the day, people used to own a sheep or a cow. They were Malik of it. And the things that you're Malik over, that you own, you have complete right to do whatever you want. If I want to break my pen, it's my right. If I want to throw it in the trash, it's my right. If I want to write with it, it's my right. I have absolute authority to do what I want and no one can question me why I'm doing what I'm doing, what I'm doing because it is entirely mine. If you own a car and you decide that you want to change its tires or you decide that you want to slash its tires, that's your problem. Nobody can question you because it's yours. Back in the day, somebody owned a goat. They want to slaughter the goat or milk the goat, it's up to them. So when Allah describes Himself as Malik, before He mentions Mulk, Malik al-Mulk, we're communicating something to Allah that we understand about Him. He absolutely owns all power. The power that I possess is His ownership. The power that He gives me or He takes away from me is His ownership. In other words, why did He give this one authority? Why did He take authority from this one away? Is not ever something I can question. That decision of His is His. That belongs to Him. And it's not something I will ever be in a position to question because power itself is something Allah owns, has full rights over, to use and distribute as He sees fit. Hey.